So when you think of the origin of synthesis, you probably think of two different things, West Coast or additive synthesis or East Coast subtractive synthesis. The pioneers of these two method of thoughts being Don Buchla for the West Coast and Bob Moog for the East Coast. How about that? Subtractive synthesis takes one signal and then begins cutting into it via filters and envelopes. Additive synthesis continues to add more sound waves on top of each other to gain more and more rich harmonics. Now let's remain with additive synthesis for a second, because what if I told you it is way older than what you think? In fact, additive synthesis was a thing even before speakers were a thing. The year is 1897. A man named Thaddeus Cahill invents something called the Telharmonium. This could be thought of as the very first synthesizer. It was the size of a building, and it was 210 tons. Okay, let's back up for a second, because you and me, we're used to tabletop synths, or even synths that can fit in your pocket. In fact, the biggest you're going to get is probably a modular synth that's going to be 8 feet tall. Let me tell you, those are some rookie numbers. And this is because we rely on digital technology to make things smaller, but it's also because we rely on the amplifier to make things smaller. Traditional amplification didn't come until 1906, about 10 years before the telharmonium was invented. So what do you do if you want to synthesize sound, but you don't have an amplifier to make that sound audible? Electronic synthesis works by moving electrons. And if we want to make an audible signal without it being amplified, you need to move a lot of electrons. Is that pretty loud? Wow. Is that pretty good? The device that's actually creating electrons needs to be huge. The telharmonium took advantage of large gears. These gears would then turn right next to a magnet with a copper wire wrapped around it. This would then in turn produce an electrical charge. Now the size of the teeth directly corresponded to a note on the keyboard. The top of the tooth was the top of the sine wave that produced the sound and the bottom of the tooth was the bottom of the sine wave. So if somebody were to make a gear size for every note on the piano, you would have the first synth ever made. Okay, gears. And then on top of that, if you added different gears to represent the different timbre and harmonics of different instruments, well, you'd be making additive synthesis. Now, timbre in and of itself is a video for another day, but the act of adding gears and harmonics to add richness to a note is in fact the first form of additive synthesis. Now here's a big question. If there were no speakers or amplifiers to change that electric charge into something that could be heard, how did you hear it? Well, there were phones. I mean, it was essentially a dial-up radio service, and get this, there was a live man playing the piano on the other side. It was not pre-recorded. It was a live concert that you could just dial up at any moment. The Telharmonium was even performed in a live concert in 1906, and it was so massive that the entire basement below the stage was the instrument. Now, the sad part about this is this amazing machine that represented the first point of actual synthesis. It never really got off the ground. For the very short period that it was actually used in the phone lines, it found that it interfered with the actual phone calls taking place. Now, if I'm a guessing person, it's probably because of the massive amounts of power it took to actually operate this machine. This thing produced 671,000 watts. You could power the average American household for that amount for 67 years. Thaddeus died in 1932, and the Telharmonium, presumably old and rusted, was finally scrapped in 1962. There is sadly no known recordings of what this thing actually sounded like. The sound has been described as sounding pure, probably like a traditional sine wave would. And the good news is once amplifiers were made, the Hammond organ was essentially a small version of the Telharmonium, and with the help of amplification, the Hammond organ became one of the most important inventions in modern music history. So next time you decide to play on your Mother 32 or your pocket operator, remember that it started with a machine the size of a building. A machine that weighed 210 tons. A machine that took more power to run than a small town. Yeah, it gives you a little perspective. Hey, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thank you.